there's a design secret in the cinema used frequently. And the reason they use it is because it creates a mood for a home. It gives a home character. It tells a story of the people that live there. And it makes a home timeless rather than trendy. Sound interesting? Sound like something you'd want for your home? Then stay tuned. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Cinematically Inspired Design, where we take the design secrets from the cinema and bring them into your own homes. On today's episode, we'll be exploring the cinema's use of a wide range of architectural features. We'll find out how they use them to their advantage, what the effect is, and how you can bring that same magic into your own home. It's not as hard as you think. Let's get started. We could cover a myriad of reasons for using architectural features in a home, but we're going to concentrate on just two today. Number one, to add drama, character, and interest to a home, which from now on I'll just refer to as adding character. And number two, to help define spaces. We'll be using examples from movie homes, and as we examine them, we'll be seeing how they used architectural elements to do those two things. One, add character, and two, how they used them to define individual spaces. And what do I mean by that, defining individual spaces? Well, take a look at these incredible movie homes. Some of them are large, some are small, but they're all interesting. And yet they're all formed out of a simple square or a rectangular space, a box, so to speak. The same kind of spaces or rooms that we're given in our homes to work with. But they don't appear to be just a box or a square, do they? They have a lot of life to them. There are different areas within these rooms used for different activities throughout the film that give the room character and make them seem larger and much more interesting than just a square room. Why is that? You've probably already guessed, a lot of it has to do with how architectural features were used in the space that was given. It makes sense to go to the cinema for this, and here's why. Because that is exactly what they are given, a simple space to transform into whatever they need to create a mood and tell the story of the people that live there. If you're watching a live performance, a play, You'll see them use the same stage with the same dimensions and just roll out props and furniture from one scene and roll in the new ones for the next and voila! It's transformed into a whole new room or a whole new home, so unlike the other, but all set within the same confines of the original. From early on, the theater was simply given a stage, set boundaries to tell the story of the people there and because of this they learned long ago how to take a set space, a rectangular stage, and use it to their advantage. Let's learn from them. What you're going to be seeing today is not an open concept plan, at least not in the traditional sense of the word. It's more of a hybrid. A hybrid that's been put to use for years in the cinema. A lot of people love the look of an open floor plan, but when it comes to living in it, they might want rooms that are more defined, yet they still don't want them to feel closed off from the rest of the home, and they don't want to lose that open, airy feeling. I'm going to show you how you can maintain the advantages of an open floor plan, but bring in the hominess, the coziness of individual spaces. Open floor plans are great, but what if you could make them even better? What if you could add something within that space that allowed you to have intimate private areas, separate spaces within the wide open environment? Look no further than the cinema for ideas. Some of these ideas will be for those of you who are building or planning a major remodel. However, many of the ideas will be for those of you who want to work within the space you already have, and you'll see both. Let's start with the apartment from Paris when it sizzles. Almost all of the story takes place within the confines of this main room, which looks to be about 20 feet by 30 feet. It's partially divided by the staircase. Notice that they chose not to have a closed off staircase. You can actually even walk under this one. And it's so beautiful. It's like a sculpture or a work of art in the middle of the room. The railing is thin and elegant with fine appointed details. It sets the tone of the room as well as separating and defining different living areas within the room. 
A staircase is an architectural element that can be used for more than just getting from one floor to the next. It can add character and help define different spaces. Notice how its placement creates the small sitting area with the fireplace. And also on the other side, the multi-purpose area with a table and bookshelves that's used for dining, work, and leisure throughout the film. Further defining that space are the columns that hold up the loft above. Notice you don't always have to have tall ceilings to create a dramatic space. This ceiling looks to be only about seven feet tall and yet it has it all. It has character, it's unique, it's dramatic, cozy, and elegant, all in one. As for drama, get a load of this. Look at those huge curved windows that become a skylight with all of the lines from the mullions crossing each other forming almost a plaid pattern. Amazing! The room could have had just that and it would be incredible. But there is so much more going on. Notice all of the detailed moldings everywhere and look at the gridded ceiling underneath the loft. Wonderful! Another architectural element that sets this home apart is the detail given to the doors. Like the rest of the apartment, they are trimmed out with thin lines of gold leafing. They brought French provincial details all the way to the doors, the baseboards, and the trim work. It's not just in the furniture. And notice the arch over the doorway. It's pulled out about five feet, creating a little foyer as you walk in. That adds drama, character, and interest to the home rather than just walking directly into the room. And the last thing we'll look at here is the entrance to the patio. Notice there's a step up from the living area before you enter the patio. That's a common trait in the cinema, adding different levels to a space, because it's another way of layering a room and defining spaces. The windows are nearly floor to ceiling and you actually enter the patio through the open windows, which is a little quirky, I know, but it's of the time and place, old apartments in Paris. We probably wouldn't want that in our homes, but the takeaway for us is still there, which is think outside the box when it comes to architectural elements in your home. Moving on now to a home from the movie, All That Heaven Allows. There's a nursery in the film with an apartment above, a very small apartment, but because of several architectural features, being small doesn't lessen its impact at all. We see Jane Wyman's character, Carrie, reading a book when she first enters the apartment, Henry David Thoreau's Walden, which characterizes the philosophy the owners live by, but also describes the flavor of the apartment, simplicity with an appreciation for nature. The huge skylight in the kitchen brings the outside in, nature inside. The kitchen is small, but that not only brings in a lot of light, but helps give the apartment its distinct personality. Notice again that although the main room is really just a square, they've placed architectural features in a way that helps define different living areas, such as the half wall and post that establishes the kitchen as a separate area, but also allows it to fill open to the rest of the home. The paneling on the walls makes it have a cabin feel to it, and the uncomplicated fireplace harkens back to a log cabin era as well. The apartment speaks of a simpler time, like on Walden Pond, where you didn't need much to be happy. We see hand-hewn exposed beams, lots of wood, the fireplace at the heart of the home, and cozy places set aside for reading. Even the light fixtures reflect an earlier time period before electricity. The beams add character and help to find the space as well. There are braces that come down from the beams at the windows, which sets them apart as a small, cozy little nook. You'll notice the windows are deeply recessed, giving enough room for a shelf beneath. Built-ins and nooks are a common feature in our favorite movie homes. Look for them in your favorite films. They help to find spaces and add an element of intimacy. Another apartment, another main room. This one from the movie Indiscreet. The first thing you'll probably notice is that they've given it different levels by having two steps up to the entry. The entry itself is well defined as almost a separate room, and most of this is done with architectural elements. The stairs themselves are curved, and the two window walls that flank each side are curved as well, with a curved heading at the top. Genius! You could argue that it's wasted space because that room's just an entry room, a type of foyer, 
but it makes the whole room. It sets it apart. It gives it a distinct look and feel. It separates the entry from the living area, and yet because of the choice of a window wall, it doesn't close it off. It feels part of the larger space. They use the same basic idea in the kitchen, which is a very tiny space. Instead of a solid wall between the cooking area and the eating area, they have a half wall with a window on top. It allows light in and yet separates the spaces into two distinct areas, but it doesn't feel closed off. And while we're here in the kitchen, notice the beautiful round window they chose to bring light into the cooking area. Another architectural element that adds character. This is a cramped kitchen and yet it feels interesting. There's so much detail here. Look at the window in the adjoining eating area. It's deeply recessed, allowing for a plant shelf. Just one more feature that brings life and personality to this tiny space. Look at the attention to detail of the doors in the apartment. There are beautiful toll paintings on each of the panels. The trim around the opening is thick and elaborately detailed. In Ingrid Bergman's bedroom, the doors are decidedly very feminine but with altogether different details. These may not be the things you would choose for the doors in your own home, but you can certainly learn from this concept that doors matter and attention to details there will pay off in the overall scheme of the room that you're creating. After all, cinematically inspired design is not about copying rooms from the cinema, but learning and applying the principles demonstrated there. In this main room from A Place in the Sun, we again see a staircase used to divide up the space. It creates little alcoves. We see a bar in one space, and since you can walk under the stairs, we see another separate space in the back off to one side. And of course, the posts that are needed to hold up the stairs help designate those areas as well. Here you can also see that the use of different architectural materials helps define the spaces. We see the large stones lining the wall that carry on out to the exterior wide planked paneling underneath the stairs and solid drywall up above. Here's a shot from Bringing Up Baby. I want to look at several different things taking place here. First let's look at the see-through shelving next to the stairs. This could have been a solid wall with shelving, but it wouldn't have had the same level of intrigue going on. Seeing through it adds a little mystery, a little drama. You wonder what's back there. Then notice the huge stone columns. They add character to the room too. They could have just been solid white and then seen as just part of the wall. They could have even been covered by the wall. And they would have served their same function, holding up the beams in the roof. But exposing them and adding stone not only adds to the personality of the room, but it separates the different areas in the home without closing them off. Again, the rooms feel open, and yet they have distinct boundaries. Imagine for a minute that dining room that we see in the background having a wall there with a doorway instead. Even if it was a large doorway, it would be a whole different look and feel. For the home in Christmas in Connecticut, they chose to have a landing at the stairs that is two levels. One level goes to the kitchen, and then you go down two more steps and you go into the living area. Using different levels is a very common theme in cinematic homes. I'm sure it serves practical functions for the staging of scenes, but the takeaway for us is that it also adds interest and helps divide the different spaces within the home, giving us intimate little areas for different things, family time, leisure time, workspace, etc. Here's a very unique use of window walls in an entire apartment in the 1958 movie St. Louis Blues. In this scene, the character W.C. Handy, played by Nat King Cole, is at home in his small apartment. We see each area marked off with these kinds of walls. In his bedroom, there's a curtain to draw across for privacy. Look at this view here. It kind of gives you a sweep of the whole apartment. Now imagine all of these windows as solid walls. It would feel very boxy, very closed off and cramped. And yet adding the windows doesn't add any extra square feet, does it? Only visually. 
I doubt very many people would want that many walls of windows going on in their home, but I use this extreme example to show you how much it can open up an area while still keeping the rooms separated. The stone on this fireplace in Send Me No Flowers extends beyond the mantle to become a half wall, and extending behind that half wall is a bar area. Notice it's left open. The post in the corner and the trim up above marks it off as a separate area, and yet not using full walls keeps it from being closed off from the rest of the rooms. On a side note, I love that they didn't add a post on the other end of the overhead trim. Just a little detail that says, we're not sticking with convention here. Another principle that you can take from the cinema into your own home, not sticking to rules. This image is from the movie The Age of Adeline. Look at the amazing technique for division of space implemented here. The two arches separate the kitchen from the dining area. It adds charm and helps divide the areas at the same time, all while creating an open feel to the space as a whole. In White Christmas, they use all of the above, built-in seating, dramatic fireplaces, columns, and walls of windows, all of which adds a distinctive character and helps divide the space. I love what they did here with the office behind the front desk. It's a standalone box. The walls don't go all the way up to the ceiling of the room it's in. It's open on top, and it has windows on all sides, both interior and exterior. They did a similar thing over by the stairs. Instead of a solid wall there, it's a wall of windows that don't go all the way up to the ceiling. I love that look. And it again separates, yet unites. Notice the different levels here too. That adds interest as well. And then there's just that big old wall of windows lining the hallway that leads to the entertainment barn. Brilliant set design. But let's step away now from examining individual movie homes and do a quick run through of different architectural elements in various cinematic settings. We'll start with windows. As you're shown these different examples, what I want you to be looking for is how out of the norm these windows are. The fact that the set designers stretched the boundaries of what we typically expect to see in a window is what allows these windows to really stand out. When you're choosing windows for your home, whether it's a new build or you're replacing windows, think outside the box and decide, would putting more money into the windows than I had planned on make a marked difference in the room? There are times when that change alone will transform your room. It may be well worth it. Look what it did for these rooms. And now the same thing with doors. Perhaps none of these will fit the style you would want for your home, but what I hope it does do for you is get you to think in a more creative way about the doors you put in your home. None of these are standard builder doors. They took the time to think of the details right down to the doorknobs and the trim, and it pays off. It's just another element that sets movie homes apart from the typical, from the expected. The cinema loves a good room divider. Take a look at these screens, grids, open shelves, slats, and other features that offer a slightly obscured view of the room beyond. Does it get your mind going? Think of simple ways you might be able to add a little mystery and divide a room up at the same time in your own home. Get creative. Have fun with it. Here's just one example. Some of you may have a layout similar to this one in your own home. If you're wanting a little more separation, you can add a bit of a wall on each side, a little more than the depth of your cabinets, and come down about a foot overhead. You can also add a beam or brick columns to help further define the separate areas. Let's look at those changes again. Here it is before, completely open, and now with the walls pulled out, a beam added overhead, and now with brick columns. You're in control of how open you want your floor plan to be. It's time for viewer questions. And today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to answer a bit of a composite question from different comments and questions I've been reading online. It seems that some of you, although you love the open concept plan, are having a little bit more trouble living in it than you had pictured. So here's some recent comments. 
While there are some things that are appealing about an open floor plan, such as being full of light, there are things I don't like. I know it's supposed to make a place seem bigger, but I think it makes it seem smaller. Everything and everyone is just in one big room. And I don't like the idea of people seeing a sink full of dishes from the living room when they come over for a visit. I hear that one a lot. So this next segment is for you. I know there's others out there that have similar feelings because I've read your comments online. In today's episode, you've already seen some possible solutions, but let me get more specific and give a before and after room transformation, showing another concept that can be applied in either a new build or a remodel within the space you already have. Here's a before example of an open floor plan with a kitchen, eating area, and living room all in one large space. I'm going to walk us through this space now so you get a feel for what it would be like walking around inside of this kind of open floor plan. Some of you will prefer it to be left this way. Now let's take that exact same space and add a wall with two openings in it, one large and one more typical size. And we're going to walk through the same space as before, even taking the exact same path through it, so you can compare and see how adding this element affects the feeling on both sides of the wall. Some of you will prefer this setup. When a wall is placed in between the two rooms, it adds a little more definition to the spaces, a little more privacy, but it also gives the home more wall space for art and furniture. As in this case, where a pull-down secretary desk serves as a homework space and extra storage in the kitchen. Adding the wall created some more gathering spots while still keeping an open feeling to the rooms. Well, I hope you've come away with some new ideas that you can apply to your own home both to add character to your home and help to find spaces. If you don't want to miss an episode, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But as for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Cinematically Inspired Design.